Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today, Building a Successful Monthly Giving Program. I just want to go over a few housekeeping items before we get started. So all callers will be muted. If you have questions, you should see a chat box to the left-hand side of your screen. Feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, if you lose your Internet connection, you'll want to refresh your browser using the link that was emailed to you. Um, also, if you have to leave the webinar early or if you want to watch it again at a later time, feel free to visit our website, TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars where we host uh, this webinar and all of our past webinars as well. You will also receive an email with the link to the presentation and the recording once the webinar is over. Also, if you are on social media, feel free to give us a tweet at TechSoup using hashtag TSWebinars. But like I said earlier, we'll be using the Q&A box on the left-hand side to monitor questions for today's webinar. Uh, so just a little bit about TechSoup before we get started. So we are located in 236 countries and territories. We uh, work with over a million nonprofits around the world uh, trying to bring donated or um, discounted technology to them. And we partner with several technology companies like Adobe, Amazon Web Services, Intuit, Microsoft, Symantec, and many more as you can see on the screen here. Um, if you are interested in learning more about our tech marketplace, feel free to uh, visit our website to see what uh, is available to your nonprofit. And just before we get started, I wanted to uh, make sure the chat box is working. So if you guys don't mind uh, trying it out and typing in where you are calling in from, and I can read out a few of those. All right, so I see Brooklyn, Maryland, Austin, Texas, Boston, Colorado Springs. Okay, so we have people calling in from all over the United States. Hopefully, hopefully we have some international folks as well on the line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, today's presenter. So we, today we have with us Michael Stein. So Michael Stein has been a writer and digital strategist for progressive social causes since the birth of the Internet. Uh, he is the author of three books and numerous articles chronicling the rise of digital engagement, mobile and online fundraising. He is currently the Senior Director of Partnerships at Every Action, a cloud-based online platform that offers tools for email messaging, fundraising, donor management, advocacy, and organizing on a single unified CRM. He is also a contributing editor to TechSoup, so we always appreciate the content that he, he gives to us. And uh, my name is Seema Tucker. I'm the online learning producer here at TechSoup. And then you've probably seen some messages from Lashika. Uh, she's going to be helping us on the back end today with any technical issues you might have. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Michael. That's great. Thank you so much, Seema. Oh, here's the next slide. Um, Great. Well, um, thanks everybody for joining. I'm actually joining you today from Northern California. Great to see folks from all over the country and also from a few other countries around the world. Um, so let's see. Thank you for inviting me um, today to uh, share my ideas and strategies for building a successful monthly program. And I wanted to quickly take a minute just to um, talk about what we will be covering today uh, in the webinar and how we'll tackle this, this topic. So we're going to start out uh, just by um, talking a little bit about why monthly giving is important uh, and, why, and, and you know, why, why nonprofits should be focusing on it. We're going to spend the second part probably most of our time discussing different tactics and strategies for recruiting monthly donors. We'll look at things like how to use donation forms, how to do website promotion. We'll talk about seasonal campaigns that you can do at different times of the year. Uh, we'll talk about the different audiences that you can target um, to recruit monthly donors. And we'll also touch on using uh, email welcome series um, to recruit donors. We'll also uh, chat a little bit about managing a monthly giving program that's already um, set up. And then we will close by talking about how to measure uh, the impact of your program by looking at analytics and such. Great. So um, let's see. As we get started though, we wanted to do a very quick two-step survey or poll uh, just to get a sense of folks that are joining us today. And the first question is, does your organization currently have a monthly giving program? 
and this is a yes, no answer. Um, it might also be a I don't know, which might be a no, uh, but we'd appreciate both. And I can see um, the responses just flowing in over here. And I think, um, let's give it another second or two. And do I click on the skip to results, I think, right, Seema? And it should show that to folks? Okay. That's correct. So it yeah. looks like, uh -huh, thanks. <laughs> so among those who have joined us on the call today, it looks, about, look, looks like 36% of you currently have a monthly giving program and about 63% of you don't. So hopefully um, I will be able to share with you ideas for both of those um, groups of people, um, help you improve an existing program, and then for folks that are looking to build one, hopefully giving you lots of um, strategies and tactics to help you um, move forward with one. Uh, let's see, I think I need to just uh, click the forward button. And so we have a second question. So a second question I guess is really for those of you who don't have a program, um, I mean, hopefully you're here to learn how to implement one. I mean, does your organization actively planning to implement a program? So yes or no, that might help just give us um, just a quick snapshot um, also, of, also of people's intent. Um, and for, uh, I'm going to quickly skip to the results. I think this probably builds in real time. So that's certainly very helpful just to know that you know, you're actively thinking about doing it. And so um, hopefully um, I can leave you with lots of action-oriented um, to-do items that you can jump on right away uh, on Friday or Monday morning. Great. Um, good. I am going to close the poll over here and then get on to the next page. Great. Um, let's see. So let me start a little bit with a few setting the stage things around um, the importance of monthly giving. I wanted to share um, some of this material from the very helpful um, M&R benchmark study, which they publish every year, and they look at monthly giving among many other um, digital uh, metrics. And so. What they're showing is, uh, you know, what we're, what we're noticing is that monthly giving is basically the fastest growing segment, you know, of, of digital fundraising. And so, like, just last year alone in 2017, it saw a 40% growth, and then the year before, it was at about, like, around a 30% growth. So we are still, it's still a really fast growing segment of fundraising, and that's why I think more and more organizations are interested in adopting monthly giving programs or growing one that they already have. Um, you know, one-time giving, you know, grew at almost 20%, but you can see that basically monthly giving is growing at about twice the pace. So if you're seeing a lot of people interested in this, and of course many of you are interested yourself, um, it all kind of makes sense. There's just a really good surge in, um, in this area. And so, and also in last year in 2017, just in terms of complete, just in terms of how much it accounts for revenue, it basically accounts for about 16% of online revenue, that's from 2017, it was 14% the year before. So we're seeing, still seeing growth there. So 16% of online revenue coming from monthly giving, and then the other, what is it, 84% coming from one-time giving, um, just in terms of those, those types of percentages. And then the average gift size also in 2017 um, was about $18 when people do email campaigns, and then slightly higher on $25 as an average gift size for monthly giving when people are giving you know, via other types of channels or when they find your donation page. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But I know that when folks are um, you know, putting together budgets or estimating, I know that these kinds of average gift size amounts can sometimes be, um, can sometimes be useful. I took a couple of quick snapshots from the MNR benchmark study, which I thought were also useful. This one just shows um, monthly giving as a percent, sorry, the, the color of this key is a little bit off. But basically you can see here, you know, 16% um, uh, monthly giving represents about 16% of on revenue. And then when you break it down, you know, in these different types of verticals, I mean, there is a lot of variability. You have, of course, public media, which is things like, you know, radio and TV, which uh, do a lot of, you know, monthly gift promotions. They have really the highest um, level of that. And then you can see down here in terms of the size of the organization, um, Basically, you know, in, in sort of medium-sized orgs, um, you know, a, a pretty large percent uh, of revenue is coming from monthly giving. So this is, this is um, yeah, just I interesting stuff and I think, um, you know, helps to support uh, our efforts in continuing to grow this. And in terms of average monthly gift, um, 
basically when you're doing an email campaign, you know, the average is $18. When people are giving just straight up on your donation pages, you know, just navigating to your site tends to be even a little bit higher. So these gives you a couple of benchmark numbers. Again, the public media stuff always uh, skews the averages a little bit. Uh, but I think when you come down here to the size of your organization, you, know, you can see that there's a, you know, studies have showed a little, little bit of variability. But even in this, like, this medium size organization or small size organization, you, know, you can see between, between $15 and $27 is really um, what we're seeing uh, for averages. Great. Moving on, so let's talk a little bit about sort of the value, the value proposition really of monthly giving. Um, I have one slide where I just want to talk about sort of why, why in fact do donors like monthly giving and why is it growing so fast? It's not just because we're asking them, it's actually because you know, donors really, really love um, a couple of things about it. And I just want to highlight these for you as you either uh, develop your program or grow a new program. I mean, first of all, uh, donors love you know, joining special clubs or special programs. And I think um, the more you can highlight um, how unique and special your monthly giving program is, um, folks will be interested in that. I'll talk a little bit later about branding and names um, and all that kind of stuff. But that's really, you know, this is really something, especially if you can highlight you know, how um, monthly giving really supports certain programmatic areas of your organization or helps you achieve more in a unique way. Um, I think those are going to be helpful. Um, or donors love to give year-round support, um, and, uh, and so a monthly gift is just perfect. You know, they can make the payment uh, you know, at the beginning of the year or the middle of the year, and I think you know, they have this sort of mental, this mental sense that they're sort of spreading their payments out across the year. Um, and I think that can be really helpful, not just for you know, donors on a fixed income, but just any kind of donor um, that wants to feel like you know they're they're involved with the organization, and so they're feeling like their their support is happening all year round. But there's no doubt that the low gift entry point of giving just fifteen dollars, uh, for example, which is a typical sort of dollar amount, uh, is definitely of, of high value for donors. Um, they they like you know giving giving a smaller amount but then but then spreading it around. Uh, and there's certainly this concept of like set and forget. Um, a donor can make a gift, he or she can then, you know, hey, it's going to happen every month. I can sort of just let that go. Um, so that, um, but, you know, to the extent that they know that they can cancel at any time and that you can highlight that in some of your marketing materials, that can be helpful. So I think these are all sort of value items for donors um, that, you should, that you should keep in mind um, also as you're writing, you know, your marketing materials. Now, the value for nonprofits on the other side of the coin, I'm, I would assume that most of you here on the webinar are nonprofit staff or nonprofit volunteers or board members. So obviously from your vantage point in terms of engaging with donors, I mean monthly giving is a terrific donor entry point, and especially because the, you know, the, the dollar amount is, is low. Um, so that's a pretty important thing. We find that a lot of monthly donors that come onto the file are oftentimes first-time donors, which, which is exciting. But there's many as well that, are, that have already made gifts that are, that are switching over from being you know, a one-time donor to a monthly donor. So at any rate, it's just a really easy entry point. We notice that a lot in, in surveys and so on. I mean, the other key point for nonprofits is that it's really like the revenue that you can count on month to month. And you can really, um, you know, you can put it in a spreadsheet if you know that you know, a certain number of donors are giving at this level. Um, you can, you know, it, it compounds over time, as they say. Uh, and this, I think, from a nonprofit perspective, um, gives a sense that that, that, that um, is really uh, a, a great value in terms of revenue, which is why nonprofits have been, you know, promoting these kinds of campaigns. Um, another value for nonprofits is there's really no need to kind of renew them in the traditional sense of the word. In a typical world, someone made a $50 gift, and then a, you know, maybe six or a month later or a year later, you go back to them and say, hey, will you renew your gift for another year? Well, really with monthly giving, there's really kind of technically no need for renewal. It just keeps on going kind of ad infinitum. I know that some people have monthly giving programs that do have endpoints, and I think that's okay, but there are just as many monthly giving programs that literally have no endpoints. So they just really just continue on. Although I do think, and we'll talk about stewardship in a minute, it is important to be acknowledging people along the way and to, you know, celebrate them every year, every six months, uh, sort of like a as a as a way to um, to thank them on an ongoing way. And then of course, um, 
you know, what, what we do know from doing studies is that um, a donor who becomes a monthly donor, uh, basically their, their lifetime sort of value to the, to the nonprofit really increases exponentially. A monthly donor stays on the file longer. A monthly donor is more likely to make another one-time gift. A monthly donor is actually more likely to make a higher gift or sometimes even to become a, or become a mid-level donor. So, um, you know, building your monthly donor file or part of your file is just, just brings so much value to nonprofits. So I just wanted to spend a few moments um, looking this over for you. Um, I was just trying to think of like the big picture components of a monthly giving program. I think this can be helpful both for people that have a program in place and those folks who are building a brand new one. And so I just came up, wanted to present these sort of these six just big points. So I think, you know, you start out um, in, a, in a program, uh, you know, focusing on recruiting people. Um, you know, you might do it different times of the year, seasonally. We'll look at lots of examples in a minute. Um, but really that's, a, you know, something that hopefully that you're doing all year round. And then, of course, you know, after you've got them on your file as monthly donors, you're going to focus on retaining them. You want to, you know, send them, um, get them engaged in the organization. You're going to send them occasional thank yous uh, and other ways to get involved and so on and so forth. So really retaining them is about engagement. Um, also in a monthly giving program, uh, you know, in a perfect world, you're also working to upgrade them. So if they're giving at a $15 per month level, you know, you should, you know, seasonally or annually, um, there's no harm in asking people to increase their monthly giving amount by a couple of dollars. Um, and I think most, a lot of monthly donors are, are comfortable if those asks um, are happening on a regular basis. Tracking, just so important in a, in a giving program to just be all constantly measuring, looking just not just from a budgetary perspective, but also looking at what some of the metrics are on, on recruitment. Uh, the attention that really helps you to assess how the program is working, areas of strength, areas of weakness, and so on. Re-engagement means, you know, if you had a monthly donor who, you know, stopped being a monthly donor and fell away, maybe they've lapsed for a little while, re-engaging them and asking them to come back as a monthly donor is a really successful strategy that a lot of organizations are using, so I just want to keep that there. And then finally, just testing. I mean, your program in a perfect world always needs to evolve, and so as your as you're tracking um, your success, it also lets you test different things. By testing, I mean you know, trying different ways to recruit people, maybe different types of language um, for upgrading them, and so on. But, but all, I think all of these components should be included as part of your thinking and part of your strategy um, as, you're met, as you're building and, and managing a program. Great. So let's segue on to part two of our webinar where we talk about recruiting monthly donors, and I'm going to cover four different areas. We're, talk, we're going to talk about websites and donation pages. We're going to talk about creating seasonal campaigns to recruit donors, monthly donors. We're going to talk about different audiences to target, and then we'll, we'll um, talk a little bit about email welcome series. And hopefully this gives ideas both for people with existing programs and also gives ideas for folks that are starting a brand new one. So. Um, so let's talk first about website promotion. It's so important. Uh, to, so even though it's important to actively go out and to recruit monthly donors, the reality is that most, statistically most of the monthly donors that will be recruited by you will be folks who will come to you on their own and sign themselves up. So whether they are coming to your web page or they're you know, reaching a donation page to make a gift during another time of the year, that's actually the largest proportion for, mo for most organizations that I've worked with historically. That's where most of the signups have come from. And I think the key thing on websites is wherever you can to make your monthly giving or monthly donor program as visible as you can to the visitors to your site. Um, I went out looking uh, just the other day for some, some fresh examples uh, it wasn't hard to stumble upon a few uh, of examples of nonprofits that are making monthly giving visible and fast and easy. So here was one just from the Greenpeace website, obviously a pretty large organization, but just a great example. This is the top of their home page. Now, of course, they have a donate button like most people have, but if you look at this right here with my red highlight, they are promoting a $25 monthly give right here on the front, which I think is great. In other words, you know, they're the fact that they're you know, promoting um, 
a monthly gift rather than a one-time gift is a real you know, dedication on their part um, to sign people up. I also just want to point out, because this is the first example, but I'm always going to give um, uh, on the bottom of a screenshot uh, the where, where the example is from, the date the example was taken, and the URL so that you can you know, hopefully go take a look at it yourself in the, in the real world. I just wanted to point that out um, for you. Um, another, uh, this was another one that I found. This is the No Kid Hungry website. This is the top of their homepage of just a couple of days ago. Just a great example of making monthly giving visible. Here it is. Your support can feed a hungry child. Donate monthly. The button is right there. So they, as you can see, you know, they already have a regular button, but they've got this extra visibility here. Um, they've got a little bit of copy, which doesn't really connect that well to the monthly donor right, appeal right here, but I think um, I've seen some other pages that do that a little bit better. Um, but definitely the visibility of putting it here I think is like super important and I think is, uh, is really nicely done. Another key place um, to promote monthly giving on your website is going to be on your actual donation page. And I just want to take a look at a couple of donation pages uh, and see how people are doing that. I mean, basically you have, um, you'll either have a main donation page where you can highlight it, and then some of you may have just a special dedicated monthly donation page. So let's take a look um, at a couple of quick examples. So this one I found um, is from Jewish Force for Peace. So this is a, a pretty typical example, I think, of how monthly giving is promoted, and you'll see it right here on the bottom where you'll see these little check boxes make this contribution monthly. I would say that you know, you, for all of you that have um, a, a giving platform that's you know, helping you take donations, there really has to be this feature um, because this is how literally how most of your monthly donors will arrive on your file. They'll come to a donation page, um, and then you know, there'll be your, your gift levels, and then there'll be the ability to do this little checkbox. Now this checkbox, you know, on a main page, you know, can remain unchecked, but of course the donor, you know, can check it um, so that he or she can convert um, the, their donation into monthly. I mean, they'll probably, uh, you know, need to change the donation amount a little bit. This is a multi-step page, so when someone clicks next, then it takes them takes their credit card and all that kind of stuff. But I thought this was just a perfectly, perfectly reasonable and good example and a very common example of, of how people promote it. Um, this next example is from No Kid Hungry. This one is probably an, is another technique that we see a lot. You can see that this is kind of a, a, a multi-purpose page, right? You can make a one-time gift, and it sort of starts out assuming you're making a one-time gift, but there's also a toggle button where you can say, no, I want to do monthly. Um, and um, you know, typically when you click the monthly button here, then these gift amounts get a little bit smaller, um, which is um, a feature I think that, that most donation platforms will have. Um, and of course, I don't know if you can see this copy right here. It's a little bit small, but it says, you know, a monthly gift does even more to help hungry kids, which is a nice, a nice way to promote um, the monthly giving option. But I think these are all um, great examples, um, and I think you know, folks can can use one of these other ones um, to be able to feature these uh, on their on their donation pages. And then this is just another one also from No Kid Hungry. I think it's, it's, a little, it's, it's old from my collection from 2012, but I just always save it because it was one of my favorites. Um, first of all, um, they feature the name of their program, which, uh, which is called The Hunger Core. And I feel like they're, um, this set of uh, content right here um, I think is a nice, strong kind of uh, presenting the value proposition, shall we say, um, of the monthly giving program. So this is a page that's only collecting monthly donations as opposed to one-time gifts. Um, and you can see the gift amounts you know, are a little bit smaller. Um, they're, you know, they're encouraging you to give at a certain level. Uh, and I, I just think this presentation um, is, is really solid. You know, and you can see that they're really working hard to get you to come in at the $20 level. Um, so you know, the, these kinds of um, elements here are all going to be helpful for the prospective donor when he or she is here thinking about the gift, you know, what giving level should I, should I select, um, et cetera. Okay. All right, let's segue on to seasonal campaigns. This is a, this is a we're going to spend you know, 10 minutes or so on this really, really important area. Um, a seasonal campaign is basically um, 
an effort that you would do on a you know, couple different times of the year where you're very intentionally campaigning with your donors to sign them up for your monthly giving program. So I like to use the word seasonal because you might try this a few times a year. In fact, I know several organizations that do these three or four times a year. Uh, you might start out once. Uh, and go from there. And really the key thing to doing these seasonal campaigns, I mean, basically it increases your sign-up rates, you're able to accelerate your program, it creates a lot of visibility among your supporters, your subscribers, your existing donors. Um, it's really a chance, you know, to really, you know, push, you know, push your monthly giving campaign and how it kind of connects to your mission and program. So all of these are going to be really useful um, in, in building your program. So um, there's lots of different tactics that you can use for these. I think the basic ones that I would always say when you're doing a seasonal campaign and ones that I see most often is you can kind of create a goal, like we're trying to raise you know, 50 new monthly donors by the end of the month or in the next couple of weeks. You can create deadlines. You can use thermometers. Um, typically, you, know, you would have a combination of different tactics. You might have an email series, a couple of emails going out, promotion on your homepage. You could try a, wet, a light box that pops up on your website. And of course, on all of your donation pages, you might add some additional promotion. But these, I would say, were, would be all the basics. The basics. There are some advanced tactics that I see people use. They might not be right for all of you here, but I just wanted to present them. Sometimes when you're doing a seasonal campaign, you can offer a little premium gift for signing up. Um, it could be something digital or it could be something you mail to folks. Um, you could be doing some very special segmentation where you ask you know, different types of people to, to, you know, to join, to rejoin, to upgrade. Again, it can be a little bit more advanced because you have to do some segmentation. And I do see folks who, uh, you know, who build in in some, other, um, in some other digital channels by pushing out things in direct mail, uh, by trying telephone campaigns and online advertising. Not all of these for every, are for everyone, but I wanted to, um, to put these here so that you can see kind of what the, a little bit what the gold standard is. Let's take, it a couple, let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here's the National Audubon Society. This is their monthly giving app that they push out in the form of an email. This is actually a really recent one, and I was impressed that they were connecting their monthly giving app to a current event, um, which has to do um, with the U.S. Secretary of the Interior, and I thought that was very clever. So this is the top of the email. Here's the bottom. What was really interesting also, and I wanted to just show this to you, was they literally present four different giving levels, um, and they have some language around each one. I thought this was a really strong presentation. It wasn't just become a monthly donor, but they're really presenting to you sort of different um, programmatic uh, ways that the gifts are going to be helpful. And you can see they start at $10 here, and they go up to $35. I think when you reach the donation page, they offer a couple of other giving levels. But I think this was a really strong presentation. Um, maybe something that folks here can emulate. Here's another example from the SETI Institute, um, which does uh, studies of life in the universe. And they had a terrific campaign, a month-long campaign. Uh, they called it uh, Become a SETI Star, which was, again, a nice, a nice branding um, uh, element for their campaign. Their goal here, this spring we're looking for 50 people. So you can see that they're, they're framing it as a goal. And as they um, – and as they rolled out the campaign across a few weeks, they would update this amount, like, hey, we've gotten to 24. We need, you know, we need some more of those steady stars. So that's a way also um, to build, uh, to build the, um, their argument for it. And they're also giving away a gift, which is down here. Um, establish a monthly gift of $10, and they'll give you a free DVD of the movie contact. So just, just um, really nice presentation. And they were targeting at the time, I think, their lapsed donors and their low donors um, in, the, in, in the campaign. Another quick example from Corporate Accountability, um, they did a month-long campaign. Um, this is the top of the message, and this is the bottom of the email message that they sent out. And I thought this was, this was a nice presentation. They had a really nice thermometer as part of, part of their email. I think this message probably um, went out kind of halfway between. You can see that they were at 74 and they were trying to get to 100. I liked the fact that this was a very visual presentation, nicely done. And I think at the time they were targeting some of their lapsed donors on the file, but I thought this was a, a really, really nice presentation. 
And then uh, a final example with email, this is from Semper Byron's Fund. They were asking people to become Redwood Rangers. That was the name of their monthly giving program. They had a goal of 50, uh, and they had a deadline, which was great. They were actually offering a match uh, from a local foundation. They had a lot of stuff going on in here. And then in case there wasn't even enough, they were giving away an exclusive carabiner if you became a donor. Uh, there's so much going on in this appeal. It's, it's a little dizzying, but you'd have to think that this would be a great test with all of these elements in here. Uh, and I thought this was a, a, nice, a nice visual presentation with a lot of good tactics that were built into here. Um, ways that you'd be also promoting during a seasonal campaign. I mean, I mean, important to do email series. If you can do presentations on the website, like the pop-up, uh, is a really nice idea. As people reach your home page, they can I think uh, a, a, pre, um, a, a graphic will pop up. Here's an example of a pop up actually from Corporate Accountability, um, which was promoting their monthly campaign. Um, and you can also do you know promotion on social media um, to remind people that the campaign is going on, and then linking them back to a donation page on your site. So those are going to be uh, common common types. Here's another example from Mercy for Animals. This is also a website pop-up that occurs. And um, the thing that I liked about this was they had this really nice thing where they were just showing, able to show who had recently donated and made a monthly gift. So I was just drinking a little water there. Um, this was a clever little piece of technology. Um, I'm not entirely sure if you can accomplish this on the platform that you are on, but I thought this was a really, really strong example um, to put in front of people doing it during a seasonal campaign. So um, just to close this out, I think uh, a seasonal campaign would probably have these elements for what, you might, what I might call a simple or a basic campaign, two to three email messages over three weeks, feature on the home page. If you can do a pop-up, that's great. If you can't, maybe just a feature to do. Uh, some posts on social media tied in at the same time, um, a special monthly donor donation form. And you, know, you can probably leave out any fancy segmentation, but just you know, go out to your whole file and see what you can do um, in, in, in terms of recruitment. So on the subject of audiences to target, just wanted to talk for a minute about which ones are the most likely to become monthly donors from a lot of the campaigns that I've been involved with in the past, I would probably put them into four general categories. Basically, your recent or frequent donors are the most likely for most organizations to convert to monthly donors, most likely because they are folks who have already demonstrated you know, interest in your work by having made frequent gifts, and also recent donors because they're so they're very active. They're, they're paying attention right now. And obviously, if they've made a recent gift, it means that they're really committed to your mission and to your work. So these, these are audiences that you can, that you can target. Um, you can even say with recent donors, you know, thanks for your recent gift. Can I interest you in becoming a monthly donor? Here are the reasons why that's important. With frequent donors, you can often say things like, thanks for your continual support these last few years. Other types of donors, that are great to target would be multi-channel donors. I mean, if you have fundraising going on more than just in the digital, if you have a mail campaign or events or do telemarketing on the phone, those are people who have given in more than one channel are very high likelihood of becoming a monthly donor. So those are folks to definitely pay attention to. And then anybody who's just been a donor in the past, whether or not they were a monthly donor, if they were just a donor three or four years ago, they may be really excited to come back as a donor but at a lower giving level, which is why the local giving level can be, can be, um, can be useful. Um, let's talk also a little bit about email welcome series. Um, as some of you know, uh, some of you may have welcome series. These are a series of emails that get sent out to new subscribers on your file. And we've noticed that these welcome series are very fertile grounds for recruiting monthly donors. So I wanted to put that here and add this um, to the webinar. Uh, and one of the reasons why the email welcome series is a great place to recruit monthly donors, I mean, these welcome series get very high open and click-through rates. So you typically get, um, get a lot of visibility for your messaging. 
And, and you know, most welcome series will include a fundraising ask. It's extremely common to have one. And so what we're seeing is that more and more people, instead of asking for a one-time gift in their email welcome series, they're now adding, um, just replacing that with a monthly giving ask and seeing a lot of really great response rates. So I really think that's one area for you to try. And I have a quick example. I found this one from the International Medical Corps. Um, uh, just, you know, this was part of an email welcome series that went out, and they were just able to slot in um, what I thought was a pretty strong, although a little bit of a wordy uh, message around the importance of their uh, monthly donor program and how it you know, provides support year-round. You know, anyway, strong writing um, and uh, certainly something that I think for those of you that have email welcome series um, to integrate a monthly giving ask I think is, is, is an important place to add there. Um, you can certainly try uh, online advertising, and I do get asked quite a lot, you know, should we pay um, places like Facebook um, or Google or Instagram or others? Um, I do see some organizations that try to recruit monthly donors through online ads. Um, probably the most fertile ground is probably Facebook because you can do a lot of very precise targeting of your own subscribers and donors, but also you, know, you, can, look, you can use a lot of their lookalike tools and so on and so forth. I would say to folks, uh, there's no harm in investing some money in online advertising to recruit monthly donors. But I would just, you know, I would, I would do some testing at first, you know, measure, you know, measure your response and decide, you know, if the ROI, if the return on your investment is worth it. I would say, you know, not every organization can succeed with online advertising to recruit monthly donors. So I would say this is probably um, an optional area. Okay, just keeping an eye on the time. Just have a few more to go. Um, so in terms of managing your monthly giving program, this is just you know a, a, an important area for you to keep in mind. Um, you know some of these some of these folks are now giving to you every single month, and I do think you need to be focused around you know retaining them. And I think the main way to do that you know is through whatever types of stewardship activities that you can, um, acknowledging them um, through an occasional email thank you. You may want to send them a special sort of biannual update on how their monthly giving gifts are having an impact on certain program areas. I know folks who create email newsletters that are focused just for their monthly donors. So I see a lot of, a lot of different examples. But just, just to be, just to be um, mindful of that, I'm going to talk in just a second about you know, preventing, uh, you know, preventing the loss of your monthly donors. And then you know, just always you know, be keeping in mind that Monthly donors um, like being engaged more and more, and oftentimes that includes, you know, being invited, you know, to give at a higher level. I think it's something that people respond, you know, really positively to. So by monthly stewardship, um, I mentioned this on the last slide, but everything from uh, acknowledgments, um, inviting them to get involved in other donor-related activities. Maybe they're invited to a special event that's framed as something unique for them as monthly donors. And then you know, just you know, keep keep in mind that they are already giving to you every single month. You know, you want to suppress these folks correctly. You might want to avoid sending them every single appeal that you might be sending to the rest of your file because these folks are already monthly donors. So just be be thoughtful in your segmentation and suppression um, as you're as you're managing these folks on your file. Um, also, just be very aware of the of the monthly donor loss issues. Uh, the main way that we see this is, of course, with the expiration uh, in credit cards because, you know, it's oftentimes tied to a credit card. Uh, the moment that credit card expires, your, um, your monthly donor will essentially no longer be able to make his or her contribution. So it's important, I think, when you're communicating uh, and stewarding with, with your monthly donors to always include a telephone number. Uh, if someone knows that their credit card is, is expiring, uh, you know, a good number of them will, if they can find that number easily, they'll make a call and send you an update. But also, you can do that proactively if you, you know, with your donor services platform. You can check for, you know, upcoming dates for expiring cards, uh, and you should be able to, you know, on a monthly or a quarterly basis, you know, send them a trigger email that says, you know, hey, your credit card is expiring in the next few months. We'd greatly appreciate if you would. Um, call our donor services folks and update your information. 
Um, you can also uh, send postcards to these folks or mail these folks. I mean, my simple point is that your monthly donors are just very high value donors to your organization. And so this type of work to hold on to your donors and prevent their loss uh, is a really uh, important component um, of managing your program. Um, let's see, measuring your impact. Um, you know, you'll be working hard uh, all year round uh, to grow the program and to steward folks. I just want to take a few minutes to talk through different ways in which you, um, you would, you know, m manage, uh, you, you would measure, uh, you know, di different analytics that help you to understand how the program is performing. So probably, you know, your core uh, area of analysis would be just the number of sustainers or, or monthly donors. Sustainers is another word for a monthly donor. And so, you know, you're looking, uh, you know, you want to just, you know, keep track every month, uh, keep track every quarter, keep track every 12 months, you know, but just, you know, keep a spreadsheet um, and, you know, just make sure that you have a good handle on those numbers. You can pull those numbers out of your donor platform. They should be providing those to you very easily. Uh, and you really want to know the total number of active donors that you have at any given moment and keep track of that. Um, you also want to be tracking, obviously, the revenue that that represents, you know, from, you know, from, this, from these monthly gifts. Like make, it, make it a whole budget line uh, in, your, in your revenue so that you understand very clearly how much your monthly giving program uh, is, is contributing um, to your bottom line. And I think your, you know, your, your CFO and your board uh, will, be, will be interested um, to understand that. Another thing that's really closely worth tracking is, is upgrades. In other words, of all the money you're getting in any given year, like, you know, how much have you been able uh, to raise just from, from upgrades? And this gives you um, an important view into um, how valuable uh, that upgrade segment is going to be um, and how important it might be. And you know maybe your upgrade numbers, you know your upgrade asks could be increased a little bit. They could be done more frequently. But that's really um, an, an, an important area, and also tells you how strongly you may be able to push people in, into into higher um, into higher numbers. Um, and of course, uh, average monthly gift is super important. Um, you you know you'll you'll be able to easily calculate your average just by you know how much money did you raise divided by the number of donors. Um, Year over year, in a perfect world, you should uh, be able to increase your average, both by upgrading folks um, every year, but also by testing ways to ask for higher giving levels. I think I showed you um, in one of those early examples um, a way in which you can uh, encourage people to give at the $20 level instead of at the $15 level. So really you know, tracking you know, what your average monthly gift um, is you know month to month, year to year uh, will help will help you know with, with you determine how, how successful you've been. Um, lifetime value duration on file. I mean these all give you um, you'll have to do a little bit of analysis in your data, but this helps you to understand um, you know how long uh, a monthly donor sort of stays on your file. I mean typically um, a, you know a monthly donor you know, can stay, you know, a year, year and a half to two years as a monthly donor before they can drop off that. And so you should be able to figure out what that amount is um, for you. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and um, you know, in a perfect world, if you do careful and good stewardship, you should be able to increase, you know, the duration of people on your file. If you're finding a lot of people dropping off because of bad credit cards, maybe you can work to, to reinforce and repair that area of your program. Um, so these are really important areas of, uh, to measure impact. And then finally, just these last two that I mentioned here, um, performance by audience segment. In other words, um, for folks that become monthly donors, like wh you know, wh wh where did they come from? Were they, were they originally lapsed? Were they frequent donors? Were they multi-channel donors? Try to do some analysis of who, you know, who, who's the best audience in essence um, to become your monthly donors. And that, that kind of analysis will really help you uh, grow your program going forward um, and also know which part of the programs you know, may be worth abandoning and focusing on, on the ones that are, that are working the best. And then finally, performance by digital channel. I mean, this, you know, uh, you know can you bring uh, people in 
you know, through email, uh, can you, is, it, is it better to work on getting people to your website and working to create better pop-ups? Um, if you're able to track traffic coming from social media, you may be able to get some insight that that, that, that digital channel may be worth doing. If you have a telemarketing program, you also may be able to have some insights that that may be um, another good area for you to grow. I wasn't planning on spending time talking about direct mail or telemarketing in this particular webinar, but I think um, those are other potential areas of growth for those of you that have those, um, those other programs as well um, in your organization. Okay, um, so uh, I just wanted to, as we're getting to the end here, just give you kind of my top four elements for building a successful program. I think if I had to recommend four things that you should do uh, to help you succeed, and this I think applies both to uh, folks that already have programs or folks building a new program. I mean, one, I would you know, make sure that you're um, improving um, your donation pages uh, as much as possible uh, because that's where a lot of the conversion and folks are going to be doing their sign up. I think these seasonal campaigns, and we looked at a bunch of examples and tactics, are incredibly valuable to grow the size of your file, and I would always recommend people do this. Um, I think it's important from an audience perspective to be targeting what, I, what I've called the recent and the frequent donors since they are the most fertile ground for recruitment. And then just super important not to forget and try different tactics to, for stewardship of your existing donors, uh, con connecting with them, engaging with them. All these things I would say are the top four elements for, um, for building a successful program. And we're going to do a couple of quick polls, uh, and then I have um, something to give, give folks, and then we'll segue into Q&A. So um, our question here for this particular poll, what challenges have you come across hosting or having a monthly giving program um, in terms of uh, – in, in the past, so I, I, I don't, you know, I, I have, so I guess the question goes like, I haven't, uh, I don't know enough about this program, which is why I haven't done it. I haven't had success with it in the past. We haven't had enough resources. I think that probably means staff resources to do a program, or we simply just don't have enough time in our organization's work um, to be able to focus on this. And I am going to quickly skip to the results. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I think you know, just not knowing enough about it, well, I'm glad you were able to join today, and hopefully um, there's a lot of uh, practical and useful ideas um, that you can use. But I also really respect the other two answers here about not enough resources and not enough time. Um, I mean, hopefully um, you, can, you can get a sense that the value of monthly donors to your organization uh, is really high, uh, and so that encourages you to make an investment of resources and time. Um, but I know that, um, you know, e easier said than done, of course, in the, in the real world, but hopefully there's some, um, you folks will see the value. Uh, let's see, I'm going to close the poll, and I'm going to pop to our next question. For those of you that are planning uh, on developing a program, what's your time frame for doing it? Are you planning on starting one right away in the next one to two months, six months, one year, not sure or never? So we're just curious to, um, just, just to get a sense of people's interest, and also, also we present these webinars, um, you know, how we can make them as actionable um, as possible um, for all of you. So it looks like for the little bit of a vast majority of you are in the right away and the one to two month category. Um, so it sounds like, um, you know, hopefully there's enough uh, uh, actionable material in here uh, to help you uh, continue to, um, to build your program. Great. And so I will also, um, leave you um, with uh, this guide, which, which I wrote uh, a couple of months ago, a nonprofit's guide to building a successful monthly giving program, which is published by the organization that I work for. And it is available as a free download at, at this uh, web address right here, which I have lost my pen. Let me see if I can get it back right here. Um, you're free to download that there uh, and hopefully enjoy that. There's a lot more material in the guide um, that will hopefully give you some strategies and tactics for building a program, in addition, of course, um, to receiving um, a copy of, of this PowerPoint. And I will go right there and pause and pass uh, the baton back to 
Seema or Lashika for, for Q&A. All right. Thank you, Michael. Um, so we have about nine minutes left for Q&A, and we have quite a few questions that have come in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So uh, one of the questions that we, said that we got was, um, our, do our donor base is about 70% baby boomers. We are wanting to attract the younger age groups. Is this a good method to do so? Is monthly giving attractive to the younger, younger audience? Yes, absolutely. Um, definitely baby boomers are, and, or younger audiences are super fond. I think part, you know, partly, because, um, you know, the, partly because of the low, the low giving levels. I think a lot of baby boomers and younger donors are interested in also spreading out their gifts across a number of different organizations, and they like to, they like, they like to get feedback and observe you know, how their contribution makes an impact. So I think, you know, A, the, um, the low giving levels are attractive, and number two, I think this is really to highlight the importance of stewardship. They want feedback. They want um, to hear how their, their money is making an impact. They like that kind of interactivity. So I think they really are a, a perfect audience um, type um, for reaching out and to participate in monthly giving programs. Perfect. Okay. Um, it seems like we have quite a few um, small organizations on here. So we got a question. Um, so it says, I work for a very small nonprofit in a rural, rural community. We're the only domestic violence sexual assault center for our country, or sorry, for our county. It's been challenging to say the least to get monthly donors. Do you have any suggestions for this scenario? So I guess um, we've gotten a few questions around the, you know, if you're a small organization and um, maybe the database isn't that large. Um, if you have any advice, a couple of things. I mean, one, you may want to think or rethink a little bit around the br the branding or the sort of the messaging of the program or how you're presenting it. Um, if, you know, as, as you saw from many of the examples, it's not just about our monthly giving program, but really thinking about a way to anchor the program as part of one of your programmatic areas and really to, you know, to say you know, a gift of $15 per month over the next 12 months will allow us to do X and Y and Z to help, uh, to help grow our program. So I think you know, it, can, it can be helpful um, at, you know, just, to, just to try to really anchor the program more strongly with one of your program areas so that people really see the value um, that they have. I think another, another issue, um, and this, I don't know the exact particulars of how everyone has tried to market their program, but to really rethink uh, like some of your multi-channel marketing opportunities. I mean, a lot of the examples that I've used here in today's webinar are really the digital channel, email, web, social media, et cetera. But a lot of success with, multi, uh, with monthly giving programs can also happen um, through uh, events, uh, through direct mail, through telephone campaigns, through uh, corporate or business partnerships. And so you may want to think about expanding your, your scale and your scope um, so that um, you're able to you know, re reach out more, more broadly and not, not relying just on your digital present to be able to, to market your program. Um, so you, may, you may, may want to take a little step back. There may be a business or a community partnership that can work with you to do something. There may be um, uh, a special donor, a large donor who wants to you know, put up a match and help you um, build some visibility for people making monthly gifts. So really rethinking you know, how you're presenting the offer out there and also thinking more broadly um, uh, about you know just different uh, multi-channel opportunities um, to be able to do to do marketing for your program. Perfect. Okay. Um, so we've got a couple questions about uh, best practices. How do you know when your solic solicitations are getting annoying and may have a negative effect? <laughs> yes, that um, that is a universal challenge. Goodness me. Um, well, I mean. It, it, that's not unique to monthly giving. I think that um, obviously you're looking at the, core, at, at, at the first level, you're looking at response rates. So if you are, for example, creating email campaigns and you're getting like very, very few sign-ups, that's a sign that you know, something, something is not well-adjusted in your campaign and you may need to rethink 
um, how, how you want to go about it. So certainly um, you know, your, your basic response rate, your basic core response rate uh, is going to be one of your most important uh, elements. I mean, there, there can also be other indicators. Uh, unsubscribe rates uh, can certainly be an indicator. Um, you know, you, it can be a little bit tricky to, um, to, to measure that uh, and, to, and to assess like, oh, gee, the reason why people unsubscribe is they're, is they're tired of hearing from us. Uh, but I think you know, this speaks more broadly to the need to be constantly growing uh, your, your file, to growing your reach in, in your fundraising program. And this is certainly not unique to the monthly, to growing a monthly, giving, a monthly giving program. This is, I think, more broadly in your fundraising. I mean, you need to be constantly acquiring new names, uh, constantly testing new techniques and new messaging. I mean, I think a healthy uh, fundraising program, whether it's digital or non-digital, uh, is going to need to be doing that on a, on a constant basis. So that's a, that's a core question uh, that, go, that speaks to, to really fundraising on, on the bigger picture and you know, certainly applies uh, to monthly giving as well. For sure. Um, okay, so I think we have about three minutes left. I'm going to ask one more question. Um, what about creating a reward program? Is that something that could be useful? For example, for $25, somebody gets a bumper sticker. $5,000, you get a small plaque. How do you, I guess, feel in general about um, having some sort of rewards program? Yeah, sure. Um, in fundraising, we typically would call those like, you know, premiums or gifts or something like that. Absolutely. I mean, I think we saw a couple, I think we saw one example from the Semper Virens Fund in the slides where they were giving away a carabiner uh, and then I think also the SETI Institute was giving away a DDD. Um, I, I think that if you can figure out the, um, the fulfillment angle to that, uh, that basically you have to mail things to people, um, I think that can actually be a pretty, a pretty interesting approach. I mean, I think that, I, you know, I, I don't see it that often in monthly giving programs, um, and I think it certainly has to be tested. Um, just to see if it'll work, and then I think you have to, you know, just pay really close attention to your costs. I mean, obviously you have to, you know, produce something, you have to mail it, you have to do the fulfillment, which is staff time. But uh, I think, you know, because monthly donors have extremely high lifetime value, I think there's absolutely no harm in trying to introduce a premium or a gift or a reward into the mix. Um, you could try testing two or three different rewards. Uh, maybe you can try a digital reward or a, some kind of a reward that isn't too heavy to mail. But there definitely can, can be some concerns, I think, around fulfillment that you would need to address if you're going to do that. Perfect. All right. So it looks like we have about a minute left. Um, we had some really good questions here. So uh, Michael has uh, generously provided his email on the slide. So if you guys have questions um, or your question didn't get answered today, um, Michael, I, I think it's okay, right, for everyone to email you? Um, that is correct. Uh, I'd okay, love to hear perfect. from people. Great. Um, all right. So just to close out today, if you guys don't mind chatting one thing that you learned in today's webinar, it's always really nice for Michael and myself to see um, what you took away from today's webinar. We also have a post-event survey, so if you guys could take a couple minutes to fill that out. Uh, your feedback really helps us dictate future content, so any feedback that you have for us is, is really appreciated. Um, if you're on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, I, think, I think we're also on LinkedIn, um, please feel free to give us a follow. We try to post a lot of helpful tips and tricks um, every day, so please, please uh, give us a follow there. And then also we have a blog, blog.techsoup.org, where we post articles um, at least two to three times a week. So please uh, give us a follow there as well. And then um, if you would like to join us for one of our upcoming webinars, we have one on August 14th, How to Produce Captivating Digital Content. And then on August 21st, 27 Ways to Immediately Update Your Website. Um, again, we post all of our webinars on our website if you can't make it. So um, just make sure that you register and we can, we can send it to you to your email. Um, thank you again, uh, Michael, for today's webinar. Thank you, Lashika, for helping on the back end. And thank you to our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk. And thank you to the audience for attending. We hope to see you guys soon. Thanks, everybody.